Welcome to BSF Recovery Team. A lot of you have been asking if I ever got the wrecker fixed, the dual spacers, and got it running back on six tires. Well, I did, with the help of Mike and uh, these wheel spacers that he salvaged from a Centurion. If you look at our old aluminum wheel spacer, you'll see because I neglected to retighten the lug nuts, we were running loose for a while and it hogged out the holes. That's supposed to be round. Anyway, so what we did is we pressed out the studs out of this one and put the good studs out of this one into our inner wheel spacer which had all the broken studs. And then, thanks to Mike, we were able to uh, acquire these wheel spacers. They're a little bit thicker than the aluminum ones, but they are made out of steel. All we had to do was press these studs out and press the right studs in for our application. I still have the passenger side to do. That's what this spacer is for. But we're not going to do that today. We have something else in mind. We have to do a little repair on the wrecker. Last event we were at, I noticed when we were out in the woods that I uh, felt like my steering was a little sloppy. I just wasn't making the corners like I should. So we took a look at it and found out that our drag link is loosened up. Check it out. See the movement in this end right here? That's our drag link. Connects our steering box to our left side steering knuckle. It's a push-pull design that uses tie rod ends on each end. And this end is wore out. Unfortunately, there's no repair for it other than replacement. If we don't replace it, it could break on us next time we're out in the woods doing a recovery. And then we wouldn't have any steering. And then we would need a tow truck. But, as luck would have it, we have a replacement lying here in the garage. For those of you who don't know, the tie rod ends have a tapered stud and that fits into a match taper of the arm and that's what keeps them nice and tight. So when you go to take them off, even though you got the nuts off, you still have to release that taper or pop that taper. It's normally done with what they call a pickle fork, but if you don't have one, there is a trick. Let me show you. With our counter pins and our castle nuts removed, we can now pop the drag link out. If you strike the arm hard enough with a big enough hammer, you can deflect or distort the tapered fit just enough to let the tie rod end come out. What you don't want to do is hit it on this end. You'll mushroom the end, sometimes crush the cotter pin hole, and ruin the threads. It'll be no good. Now, we can put our other one in. Put our castle nuts on. Of course, if that stud starts to spin, all you need to do is force that taper together That'll hold it until you get the nut tight. One thing to remember about castle nuts and tapered tie rod ends is if you go past the hole and it doesn't line up for the counter pin, don't loosen it up. Tighten it up some more until the next slot lines up with the hole until you can put the counter pin in. Now a little grease and we're all done. This has been a BSF Recovery Team Quick Tech Tip.